Hi everyone, it's Nicole McGuirk for Mama Elephant and this card was created for the November 2014 Stampede Blog Hop and it showcases the new Balloon Letters Alphabet Stamp which you can either use the letters as is or you can create those fun little um, notches at the end so it looks like you've tied off a balloon and then either draw in strings or stamp strings. So lots of fun ways to use this Alphabet Stamp Set. I'm pairing it with the cute little monkey critter from the Up and Away Mama Elephant stamp set that I have stamped here on some Nina Smooth White cardstock that I've die cut with the Femme Frames stitched rectangle die. And I'm adding his little tail there. I am not using the coordinating dies for the Up and Away. This is all going to be kind of a one layer here. And then I've laid out the balloon letters you can see. And I am using a hybrid ink here that is going to work well with Copic markers. Because I'm creating a one layer card and I'm going to color in the background of my card, I'm going to be coloring around all of these images. And I wanted some kind of an ink that would not bleed when it came into contact with the alcohol ink Copic markers. And these hybrid inks work really well, I think, for that. I decided to create a rainbow effect for the alphabet letters, and I'll build my sentiment up. I am going to use the brand new Happy Everything stamp set to finish out my greeting for my card, but I am not gonna do that till the end. That's actually gonna be on top of all of my coloring and things. So for now, I will do my balloons here in these bright, happy colors and I have my little monkey. Now once I have both of, or all of that done, I need to add the tails. And I started adding the tails and I added only that one and then I got excited, I think, about creating my Copic background. So I grabbed my marker and I started kind of coloring in, forgetting that I had the rest of those tails, which it ended up being okay. I'm gonna show you how I fixed that here in a minute. I am using a lighter kind of bluish purple color here for a Copic marker and I believe it's B63. And I drew in kind of diagonally from that top right corner to the bottom left corner, leaving it skinnier at the top and wider at the, at the bottom because I want that to kind of not exactly be a spotlight, but I want it, it to look like the light is hitting the monkey and kind of um, shining on him and sparkling and things around him, which is kind of hard to imagine at this point in the card, but that's where I'm going to get to. Now you can see I didn't color all the way to the edge of my card. A lot of times I like to leave that white border because I think it adds kind of an instant matte. And so as I started out here, I thought, oh, that'll work. Oh, and here's where I just I realized I forgot to add my balloon tails, so I went ahead and just stamped them. I stamped over my coloring and everything, and I'll, I'm going to take the colorless blender, the zero pin, and move some of that ink away from the red. It won't remove all of the ink. It's not really going to do that, but it did push some of that blue ink away from there, and so it did enough that you can see that there's a balloon tail. And once I get all my coloring in, it's not going to make a big difference. So don't immediately scrap a project just because you think you maybe made one mistake. I also did the, the remover there around that yellow tail on the yellow balloon it's for the same reason. Now this required quite a bit of blending. You can see that look, there's a pretty sharp line there. I didn't color in the monkey first because I thought just in case I messed up, I didn't want to have colored him in all cute and only to ruin it with the background. So I left him for a little bit and I really, really worked on getting my background blended out. The more you saturate the paper for something like this, the better it's going to blend. Um, I don't always recommend that, but for this particular where you're really trying to get those colors to blend out, you're going to want to saturate the paper quite a lot. So you can see I've really gone over it. Oh, this took quite a little bit, so I've sped it up 
a lot. This was kind of a practice thing for me. Um, something new. I haven't done a lot of this before. I was definitely inspired by my friend Sandy who does incredible Copic coloring work and backgrounds and all kinds of things. And so I had seen some projects she's done and thought, oh, I, I'm going to just try that. And it's really addictive. I, I kind of have stayed away from it, just admiring from afar. And I can see that it's definitely one of those things that's really fun to do. Now, I decided at this point, because I had saturated my paper so much and it was bleeding out to the edge anyway, to go ahead and color on out to that outer edge of the paper. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I didn't leave that white border for this particular card. So it's going to require a little bit more blending, really going over it to try to, I don't want any of those harsh lines, which are a little hard to get rid of all of them, but you can do a pretty good job. You can see those four colors I'm using really did blend out pretty well together, leaving a nice light patch. Now I'm taking the colorless blender and where it's nice and light from that top right corner to the bottom left, I am making little dots. Some are bigger than others. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. The Copic Blender kind of pushes the color away from where you lay down that color or that colorless blender solution. So it's going to create this really kind of fun um, effect where you get all these little, for me, I wanted it to kind of look like little. Uh, spots of light, you know, when the light's filtering in maybe through a window or whatever, and it creates those little particles or whatever of light. And I thought it would be really fun to kind of try to emulate, emulate that look for this card, even though I'm doing kind of a darker background, not really a, a bright sky or anything like that. Kind of a more magical, fun, birthday-ish feeling card. Now, as the blender solution dries, it, it won't stay quite maybe as um, bright, white. It won't move all the color away, I guess. So, so you can go over it as many times as you need to to kind of get the effect you want. Now, I didn't want the balloons to completely disappear into the background. I wanted them to have a little bit of dimension, so I went around with a little bit of a gray marker. And I'll go back with my lightest blue violet and blend anything out that was maybe a little bit harsh and a little of that maybe bleeds into especially the tail the little tails of the balloons but that's okay I'll color in my monkey I'm happy enough with my background at this point that I decided to go ahead and color him in that I didn't think this was going to be a complete fail and that I would be able to save it so I colored him using a couple of colors of browns for his body. And I colored in his cheeks a really light pink and that ends up really getting washed out once I color in his face and his tummy. So I had to go back in at the end and add a little R20 to that. And I had a hard time deciding what color I wanted to do his face and things. So I worked and worked on that. One of the best things about Copic markers is how you can continue to go over the image, darken the image, blend it out as many times as you need to until you're happy with it. So this was one of those projects because it was something new for me and I was trying it out that took quite a bit longer than I normally spend, but it was kind of um, a play type of project that ended up working itself into something that I could actually use, which is really fun. I think it's always fun to experiment with new techniques and things, and uh, when, when they work out, be able to translate that into an actual project of something I can use. Now again, I needed to add a little shadowing around him to help him pop off that background just a little bit. So I went around him with a little bit of gray marker, and I had to push some of that ink off the tail end of the blue balloon as well and then I left it for a little bit and I'm going to do it again and leave it alone for a little bit. You don't want to oversaturate it too much because that ink will bleed right back in so I like to kind of try to push that ink off of whatever maybe I, I got it onto and I didn't want it 
there and let it dry and then I'll go back and do it again if I need to. So I think that the background is really coming together nicely. At this point I just added a little bit more shading and things, a little more shadowing, and finished off my cute little monkey. And then I'm taking a black pen and drawing in my balloon tails. I really didn't have a stamp that was going to work with this and this is so much quicker to do it this way. So I'll color in all of those. And there is my monkey holding the balloons. The card is starting to come together now. You can kind of see where it's all headed and where it's going. Now I decided I wanted my balloons to have a little sparkle and I started with the Wink of Stella Clear glitter pin and decided I probably should go in and add a little bit more detailing and shading. Not a ton, but just a tiny bit with some Copic markers. Now I mentioned at the beginning of the video I used the hybrid inks from My Favorite Things. These inks will work with your Copic markers, which is one of the greatest things about them, I think. So I went ahead and colored right over my letters with some kind of coordinating, a little bit darker colors of Copics, or went right over the stamped image with the Copics, just to add a tiny bit of detail and depth and dimension. And then I will go over all of the balloons with the clear glitter pin once I have all of that detail in. And I think that really helps give them a little bit more of a dimensional look than what they actually had. So they coordinate or, or go with the um, rest of the design of the card much, much better. And then the little bit, I love always adding a little bit of sparkle with the Wink of Stella pin. Now a little bit of the color background color bled into that white highlight portion of the stamped letter Y. So I went back in with a white gel pen and colored that in so it was white again and you never will, would know that the color bled right into that area of the letter. So I love the background, I love the little dots, and but I wasn't real happy with the other two corners. I, I They were fine, were fine the way they were, but I love adding dots. There's something about them that I think is really fun. And because I had all those dots in that middle section, I went back in, instead of going in with my colorless blender now, I went in with some of my other colors of markers and created a whole bunch of little dots all around. Some are teeny tiny, some are bigger, and I think that that really just kind of makes the whole background come to life. I love this. I think it looks much, much better than how I originally had it. So I love how that turned out. Now once I have that all inked up and all my little dots, I'm ready to finish my card. So I'm stamping the Wishing You from the brand new Happy Everything stamp set with some Versamark ink and sprinkling on some super fine white embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp. This is incredible embossing powder. I'm really loving it. I think it it does exactly like it says. It's great for fine detail. So these sentiments are pretty small and you really want to be able to read them. So I think it works great for that. I'll tap off all that excess and heat set those and the white really pops off the background. Now I've laid a piece of ribbon back behind my colored panel and then I've die cut the black scallop rectangle from the Femme Frames die collection for behind that. I end up not using the ribbon but I really like the color. I wanted something a little less bulky so I chose to go with some patterned paper banners instead and I'll show you those here in a minute. But I thought to really highlight that lighter portion of the card I would finish it off with some sparkling clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh in the 4 and 6 millimeter sizes. And then I've die cut a few stars from some silver glitter paper using the confetti die from Mama Elephant. And then I've layered a couple of die cut banners here from Pattern Paper behind my panel, add some foam adhesive, and attach that to the black scallop rectangle and then to my card base. So here is my fun birthday card showcasing the brand new Mama Elephant Balloon Letters stamp set. 
The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.